All right, so here we have about four pounds of ground meat. I'm using deer and beef with pork in it, but you can use any kind of ground beef, meat. You can use beef, you can use uh, turkey. I wouldn't use sausage, but you know. If you like it, I guess you can. Uh, I'm just draining it in the, because there's, you know, usually with this, this stuff here, you know, like ground beef, you don't have to do it. It's just because I've got this deer meat that's got a little bit of uh, juices in it. Uh, that's the first thing you gotta get going on. Um, here's the spices and the cans. So I'm using three cans of fire roasted diced peppers. It doesn't have to be salsa style. It doesn't have to be fire roasted. You just need cans of diced tomatoes. Uh, four cans of beans. You can use any kind of beans you want. Um, you use pinto beans. You can use kidney beans. Really, if you like the bean, you can put it in there. Uh, a big can of tomato paste. If you don't have a big can, get two of the small cans. And these are the necessary spices. There's, focus, uh, cumin, chili powder, salt and pepper. And optionally, you can add cayenne pepper. Um, and you can add garlic, but you don't have to. I'll show you how much you put in. Darn, this thing doesn't focus well. And you need like a kind of like a soup pan, a big soup pan, and some kind of frying pan. This is a frying pan. That's also a frying pan, but I'm gonna use this one because it's got a taller lid. Uh, Vegetable-wise, sorry about my shadow everywhere. I'm not professional, right? Uh, you need an onion, bell pepper, and if you like it spicy, you can add in a couple jalapeno peppers. You can add other vegetables to it, but this is pretty standard uh, for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the meat in. Well, this is already open, so... Uh, if you like, there is a lot of fat in here and you aren't going to need extra fat, but I like to put a little bit of, uh, oil, this is just olive oil, at the bottom just so it starts with like a clean non-stick surface. You know, just moving around, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just... Get it so that it's at the bottom, especially where the burner is, which is in the center. So, the meat. Yep, just dump it in, make sure there's no like soaking pad at the bottom. Toss that out. Venison is pretty sure it's got a soaking pad. And the goal when doing this is just to cook it all until it's brown. Maybe even like a little, not burnt, but brown. So this, like I said, I hope I said anyway, is uh, four pounds of meat. You can use less. You can use two pounds. You can use one pound. Uh, you, if, if you're going to just have the recipe and make like less than I'm going to make right now, 
that is A-OK. -okay. Just use half of what I said. And you're gonna... Am I turning on the right burner? No, I'm not. There we go. Put it on like a medium heat. And with a spoon or a spatula, it doesn't matter which, break this up because it makes it cook quicker. Okay, if you don't break it up like any particular way, just stab some holes in it. Sorry again, this is not a professional video. I'm just trying to show you how to cook. Later on, once it starts cooking, you're going to break it up a lot more. Yeah, good for now. So, at this point, just put some salt on it. I'd say like maybe like two tablespoons because ideally this should season the whole thing, not just the meat. And just, you know, a teaspoon or two of pepper. And then you cover it. And probably by the time I'm done chopping up the vegetables, it will be time to uh, see if I can get this. Well, sorry about that. So I apparently hit something in it. Got it all. And you're gonna want to peel the skin off. This you'll notice the skin's done when it's like whitish. I mean, here it's still a little bit of skin, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Don't be afraid. So let's see if I can do this. Hmm. How about this? Stop tilting. Well, that's the best I'm going to be able to do. So, you'll see, you don't want to cut the top of the onion off. Make sure you do this on a cutting board or a plate. I'm using paper plates. See, here's, here's that bit of skin. Just peel that off. It's 
real easy to do. And then chop off the other edge. And that's an onion. Cut it in half. Cut it in half the other way. And sometimes it's best to do this too. Cut it in half like that way too. Each piece. You can use any kind of onion. It does not matter. I'm using sweet onions because it's Georgia and that's what they're known for. But you can use a red onion, you can use a yellow onion. I mean, whatever. And then you just do this. Keep in mind these will cook down. You do need the onion. Even if you don't particularly like onion. And it's okay if you just keep chopping like this, like, because I've only got this paper plate. Uh, keep chopping it, because the smaller the onion pieces are, usually the better. But like I said, it will cook down, so you won't notice it too much. And then I just sort of... Go over it once like this. And there you go. You got onion. Since I'm using multiple paper plates, I can move on to the pepper. It doesn't matter. You don't have to wash. I mean, wash your produce first, but. Sticker off. Now it's probably going to be easier for you to see this as a bell pepper, but any pepper, if you use a jalapeno, you just want to do this. Bell pepper seeds, they don't matter that much. I mean, they, a, few, a few go in there, it's not a big deal. But jalapeno pepper seeds, they make it extremely spicy. Spicier than if you just use jalapeno itself. And like with the onion, cut it into quarters. And then just cut it into strips. Maybe cut it once that way. I'm just going to put it in the pile of onions because that's all going to go in together. Now, if you really don't want to cut stuff up, you can just get frozen cut up bell peppers and frozen cut up onions. It'll cost more, but if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. They just sell them in the vegetable section of the grocery store. And it'll come out nearly as good. Like you won't notice a quality difference because you're going to be cooking this down anyway. 
Now here's the jalapeno, which I told you about. You definitely want to get the seeds out. So. You're going to have to split it open. Let's see. Now they don't, I think, sell uh, jalapenos that are pre-cut up in the frozen section. You don't have to have the jalapeno. I just like it. And again, a few seeds isn't going to kill you, but get the vast majority out. And then just cut these into quarters and then just make strips. Chunks are smaller. I mean, ideally with chili, I mean, you want the chunks to be small, but they're going to cook down. So, let me just. This to the pile of veggies. The part with the knife is done. And you see onions bell peppers, and jalapenos. So let's check on the meat because it sounds like it is cooking. You can see. Yes, it is. Now you're going to want to like rotate the meat around so that all getting towards the bottom so that it can all brown. Mix it around, chop it into chunks. I wouldn't say the smaller the chunks are better because you don't want a few big chunks in your chili. But if you make them small, don't fret, it'll taste good. Keeping the lid on keeps the uh, steam inside so it makes the meat cook faster so that it's like, you know, food safe. But to be fair with chili, even if you have some raw meat in there, it's going to cook down because you're going to be cooking this chili for at least an hour or two. It's going to cook away any of the I'm 
I'm sorry if this is not professional quality, but... Again, as long as you got a lid, it does not matter too much. It will all cook. Just try to stab it into small pieces. Again, leaving a few chunks here and there. You know, you, you gotta. That should be good. Put the lid back on. Make sure it's on the center of the burner. And as with everything, easier to wipe up a little bit while you're doing it rather than clean a huge big mess when you're done, even though it won't be a huge big mess. Um Now, we're going to start with the beans. Now, the be beans, you're going to want to drain them in the sink. Just, if you don't have the ones with the pull top, just, you know, cut the whole thing open and... Press the lid like that. They will drain. It's not too important. You know, a little bit of bean juice is fine. I mean, it's chili. It's going to taste like beans anyway, if you use beans. Which, in this recipe, I am. If you wanted to get meticulous, you could throw all these beans in a colander. We don't have a colander, so... That is not an option. If you want to use less beans, that's okay too. But if you want to do it exactly the way I'm doing it, that's fine. Chili is not, it's very forgiving. Obviously you're gonna wanna rinse your sink after you're done, which of course I wouldn't do, but. the last can of beans. Okay. So. That's it for the beans. Uh, there's that. And any bean you gotta drain, it's just the thing. Now as for these tomatoes, you don't drain those. You need that liquid. Uh, hold on a 
sec. God damn it, I hate touch screens. I just want to put the camera down and of course it turned it off. All I'm doing now is just opening the cans of tomatoes. Again, not grinding them. And of course I put it against the tomato paste. Just a second. I gotta use a can opener for this, and I need two hands. Tomato paste is not tomato sauce. Make sure you get tomato paste. It is like condensed tomato. See? Tomato paste. Looks like that. It looks like a hard gloop of tomato. Those are the tomatoes. And you're wondering about the seasoning, of course, but I don't put that in until after the meat is done other than salt and pepper. Let's see how the meat's doing. Hmm. Actually, it's pretty well done. fat in here because I used the high fat meat. Not venison, but the uh, other. And you want some of that fat because you're going to be cooking vegetables in this. Because then only does it impart flavor, but jar. Pour about two-thirds of the fat in. There's going to be more fat in this as it cooks down. Let's see. I've got about this. You just sort of Put it up. Um, and of course, this is tangled in. Put it up here, or you can put it in the fridge, and it'll harden into something like that. Some, something I cooked earlier. Now, at this point, you got your veggies. Now, this is a paper plate, so I'm gonna. I'm just throwing the veggies on top. The veggies need the fat to cook down. And plus, like I said, they give flavor, meaty flavor to the chili. Just sort of stir everything around.
try to get it towards the bottom and of course still chop up your meat. Okay, so here's an important part. While that is starting to cook, you need, well, I need a bigger spoon. These two, chili powder. I like to put in about a tablespoon, which is, you know, you can measure it exactly if you like, but I like to put in about a tablespoon of pound of meat. And of course, I can't do this one handed. So, Putting in four tablespoons. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm putting it in. See, so it's about like that much per tablespoon. And then you just sort of like dash it on top. You know. Just to make it easier to stir around. You might want to add more later. You do that yourself to taste. Um, another thing, cumin, 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 whatever. Uh, so let's put in about like up to a tablespoon, but like this thing that I can't get the thing in, so. No, I'm I'm just eyeballing this. But it's about a tablespoon. If you're making less, obviously use like half a tablespoon. And yes, I wash my hands. Don't put these away. You might need them later, like towards the end of cooking. The reason why you put the spices in now is because the fat in the meat makes the this is cayenne. You don't have to add that. Just add a sprinkling, like a teaspoon or two. Again, you don't have to add it. This is optional if you like spicy chili. If you don't, do not add it. And garlic. You can use garlic powder too, but I've got minced garlic here. I like to go crazy with the garlic. If you do add it, add like a tablespoon. Garlic, mince, or garlic powder, whatever. Now... I don't need that. That should be enough. And then with the spices, you just stir them all around to get like an even coating on everything. Making sure again, to break up big chunks of meat as you see them. And what you're basically going for here is you want 
the onions to turn sort of translucent. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on here when it happens, but see these are starting to turn here. You want as much of the seasoning to be blended around. Of course, this will leach out into the chili and provide a lot of its chili-like flavor. That's smelling pretty damn good, too. Now, just... I put my spoons on the edge of the thing because it's easy to clean. Cover it. Let it go for like another five or so minutes. While I'm doing that, I can start putting this in here. And the tomato paste is going to be, see, it does not go in. I got to take it out with a spoon. So, sorry why I do that. Now, tomato paste for some people is very strong, but again, you're going to be diluting it. And because we're using tomato paste, need a cup of candy water. Because I need something to hold it into. Notice I haven't started the burner for the other side. You got your beans, beans go in. Beans go in. beans. Hell yeah. And beans go in. Now you'll notice pot's filled up quite a bit. This is a eight quart so two gallon pot. If you got a smaller pot only you're going to want to make half of this. So, 
just wipe up so that I don't have that much of a mess to clean up later. And let's check and see how the onions and meat are doing. Smelling good. And that means that, let's see if I can show you here. See how the onions are like a bit see through now? That's what you want. And I am going to put this down for one more second. Sorry. But I gotta. Use both hands to get all this meat in. Here. Now you're just going to want to dump it all in. If there's fat in there, that's fine. Shouldn't be though the too much because the onions and the bell peppers will have absorbed most of it. And I'm just throwing the pot in the sink, filling it with soap and water so that it's easy to clean later. And here is the proto chili. I'm going to give it a big stir, get everything moved around in here. Sorry about my fingers all the time. Scoop up from the bottom so you're moving the beans up and that moves the meat down. You're not trying to make, make it all meat at the bottom, you're just trying to make it like an even mixture. And that is pretty much basically how to make chili. Uh, I will give you some sort of photo when this is done, but I'm not gonna make more video because I've already got to stitch together all this shit. So, this label wouldn't come off, so. You wanna put it on go. Make sure it's on the center of the burner. Ideally, I would have a lid that fits it, but I got that lid. So it shouldn't boil over because it's mostly not water, it's a lot of water, but the fat and everything, it should keep it down. Also the fact that it's on low. So just when you're done, you know, I'll clean the sink later, but make sure you get all this gunk off of whatever surface. Use I use Lysol wipes. You can use any all-purpose kitchen cleaner. And 
other than this, you just come back. You can cook it for an hour, you can cook it for two hours, you can cook it for six hours. It all depends on how you want it. I would go for about two hours on low and come back every half an hour to, to an hour and just give it a good stir. As you can see, my spoon's still there. And without complicating things by saying, oh, I'm gonna add spices for my flavor, I'm not gonna show that because this is good. This will be good. It just has to cook down. And if you taste it and you want it spicier, you can add more chili powder. You can add a little bit more cumin. Um, you can add a little bit more salt and pepper. But other than that, that's pretty much how to cook chili. So I hope this helps crack.